Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to my studio, welcome to this week's yoga offering. I'm excited that you're here. I'm excited to share with you some of the beautiful things that I have on my heart today and things that I've read and just the reminder that when we come together to practice, whether it's in video or it's in person, I'm with you and I'm never gonna be that teacher that stands at the front of the room and has you watch me. I am with you. I am side by side. I am in the circle with you. And in doing that, we create this beautiful sense of oneness and equality and connection that I think is imperative um, to living the best version of ourselves. So I want you to start today's practice with your soles of your feet together. Knees are gonna bend. And there'll be this space between the base of your body and your feet, this diamond shape. I want you just to spill your body over that diamond shape. Hold on to your feet or your calves or your ankles. Let your shoulders round, drop your chin. Close your eyes. And as usual, I go away. I'm just gonna be the voice that guides you through your practice today but your work is to listen to the language that your body is speaking and give it what it needs and listen and pay attention. So I will be back really soon to finish up the practice together. Enjoy, see you soon. Start to just allow the body to become soft here as you round your spine. Maybe the elbows draw in. You come into this beautiful little seed of yourself. Your heart is pushing up towards the ceiling through your upper back. Just allow these first initial minutes to remind you of the noise outside your space. It's normal, it's life. The traffic, the dogs, the kids, that's life happening. And then we come into the inner noise of our thoughts, this amazing mind of ours to think and to plan and predict and analyze and even worry. Just allow a few moments to acknowledge what's in your brain, and your mind. And then go into your heart today. What do you feel? What speaks as you think about your heart? I'm reading a beautiful book. And this, this week's reading is about opening our heart in the face of fear. And I love how things show up just in the perfect time. It seems that as our communities are moving out of a certain phase of restriction, moving into a new phase, we might be feeling both like we can breathe, happy, maybe a sense of normalcy is on the horizon, we also might feel some fear. So just allow whatever is to show up within that scope of emotions just to be. I 
As I was reading the chapter around opening up our heart to face fear, what I took the most is is that we welcome whatever shows up. And what we know so much is that the more we resist something, the more it comes back time and time again. And so we ask ourselves to surrender into this, lean into this, this unknown and this fear, and and maybe even start to identify where it is showing up in our body. Where is this fear showing up in our our choices and our behaviors to manage the fear. And that when we can simply sit with it, we can realize that the blessing of the freedom of no longer trying to resist something, we just sit. And the author goes on to say that another beautiful practice of dealing with these fears is to find the truth, the way of things, and take refuge in the truth that everything within us and around us is subject to change. And that the truth that if we hold on or resist our stream of experience, we actually deepen those fears. And then the third thing the author author says to deal with these fears is to find refuge in Sangha. And in this time in our lives where we're not able to really be in close contact with people outside of our, our family unit, our home unit, whether it's you and a pet or you and a partner or you by yourself or you and a child, Right now, that's what you have. And a Sangha is a community, essential people that are on your path for awakening. And we may not have that in the way that we've had it in previous times. And I realized as I read this how important my Sangha is, certainly when I'm teaching because I teach what I also need to learn and I'm not the type of teacher to stand at the front of the class and be the center of the show. I want to be there with you. I want to be in it. I want to peel the layers right alongside with you. I miss my Sangha in that sense. And I realized that when I think about the people that are in my life that are walking the path of truth with me, That's my freedom. That's me knowing that I'm not alone. So it brings a sense of safety in the face of fear to recognize your Sangha and to take refuge in the Sangha by remembering the people in your life that love you, that allow feelings of warmth to come at you, to welcome in the feelings of togetherness and unity And that can diminish those fears to know that you're not alone. And while fears are great, there is greater truth in remembering that we are connected. Notice how your body has become soft in this posture. The head acts as a weight to pull an opening through the back of the body, the spine into the hips. On your next breath in, let it be slow and just start to bring the body up. Keep your feet and your legs just as they are. Rest your hands on your knees or your shin bone just below the knee and begin to slowly circle the body, taking the weight from cheek to cheek and let it be slow. Let this journey today, the movements, be incredibly intuitive and quiet. 
and slow. This nurturing of whatever shows up today to lean into what shows up, to welcome the truth of what shows up, and to remember in that truth that you are not alone. And you'll take about three more as slow as you can, just churning the body. And maybe the head is still falling, the shoulders navigate through this motion and then you'll pause and reverse your direction, slowly churning the body, just awakening the energy in the spine. Awakening what's showing up, maybe deeply buried. And then recreate some stillness and maybe the head wants to stay bowed at your heart, it's fine. Take your right hand behind you, place it on the mat, and bring your left hand around to your right leg. You'll take a breath in and get long through your spine and then begin to turn to the right. Just feel the twist there. Start to walk your right hand forward, find your left leg, bring your left hand behind, plant it on the mat, take a breath in, turn to the left. And bring your left around. Cup your hands on top of your knees, keep the soles of your feet connected. And then lean back a bit, round your spine, straighten your arms, tuck your chin deep against your chest, let your heart push to the back. Sort of a gesture of honoring where you've been in your past. And then begin to reverse that motion, start to push your belly forward, lead with your heart, let it rise up as your nose lifts. And then let go of that and straighten your arms round your spine again. Once again, honoring where you've been. And now your next breath leads you into what will be with your heart lifted, your nose up, brave, full of life. And then go ahead and let go of that. Slide your legs around. Make your way to a tabletop. Spread your fingers wide here. Be very deliberate with your placements. Lift up all the fingers and then press them back to the mat with this intention to connect. And then walk your big toes so that they touch. Let your knees go wide. Drop your hips back to your heels and offer your heart down. It's a pose that we call child's pose. And when you get to this position, walk your hands out even further, maybe even push into the fingertips so that your hands lift off the mat and your arms get a stretch, the back of your body, your shoulders, your lats, and the heart melts. Now begin to walk your hands back just a little bit, maybe six inches or so. Keep the shape that you're in. Begin to lift your right arm up towards the ceiling. And then when you exhale, weave your right arm through 
the hole underneath your left shoulder, reaching your right hand through that space, palm face up, and then you turn your head and rest your right cheekbone and your right shoulder on the mat. And this is a pose we call threaded needle. It's a twist and the upper back gets a nice twist as the hips sink back. And then just as we came in, we come out, we slip the right arm through the needle hole. We reach it back up to the ceiling, opening the heart, opening the chest, and then return it to the mat in that child's pose, the arms in front. Let's try that on the left, lift your left arm. Now weave your left hand through that window underneath your right arm. Turn and put your left cheekbone on the mat, your left shoulder as your palm is up and you twist. Now just like that, begin to unweave the left. Plant your palms and rise up to all fours. From here, tuck your toes and make your way into that upside down V shape. Downward facing dog and you might find movement, pedaling your feet, maybe taking your feet wide. And then we will take our hands today back towards our feet. So just begin to walk your hands back until your body is surrendered over your legs into a wide fold. And forward folds are incredibly enriching to quieting the mind, soothing the soul. So allow your body to drape. Now bend your left knee a lot. Reach your right arm up to the sky. Press your right heel down, feel. Maybe reach an inch. And you take a long breath in. And now lower your right hand. Bend your right knee. And lift your left arm high, high, high. Feel that. Take a big breath. and lower your left hand. And now like a flower, just coming up in the morning, begin to rebuild your spine. We'll come up to a stand as slow as you can. When you get to the top, your shoulders will fall and you'll exhale. And just stand in attention. This beautiful, beautiful day, allowing whatever it is that needs to be unearthed to face, whether it's fear or uncertainty or love, let it be. And whatever it is that's showing up is here for a reason and it's truth wisdom, if we're willing to look at it, to be with it, to welcome it, and to know that whatever it is, you're part of something, you belong to something. Now slide your arms up high. 
and reach. When you exhale, just fold over those legs again. Slide your hands up to your shins, come up halfway and fold real deep. Bend your left knee, reach your right arm, take a breath in. When you exhale, fold. Bend your right, reach your left. And fold. And now rebuild your spine, come up to stand, go slow. Then when you get to the top, just let your shoulders fall and breathe out. And take a breath in and reach high and fold over your legs. It becomes this stance. We take a halfway lift to find space and then we fold. And then we bend our left knee and reach our right arm high. And then we fold back into ourselves again, bending right knee, lifting left. We fold again. And we unpeel slowly, allowing. We get to the top and our shoulders fall. And we do that again. We extend the arms high as we breathe. And now fold over your legs. This last time through, bend your left, reach your right. And fold. Bend right, reach left. and fold. Go ahead and walk your hands forward. Hips go up to the upside down V-shaped downward facing dog. And now take your eyes forward. And your feet go forward this time to meet your hands. And when you get to your fold, stay. And start to peel your body up. We come back to stand, to pause, to reflect, to look inside. Arms will go high, you'll take a breath in. Then go ahead and fold over your legs. Take a halfway lift and then fold, touch the mat. Take your right foot and step it way back. Leave your right hand on the mat as your left arm reaches up towards your bent left leg. So the left arm goes high and you're turning towards the left knee that's bent 90 degrees. It's called the dragonfly twist. Take a breath in. Lower your left hand back to the mat. We're here in this low lunge. Go ahead and drop your right knee to the mat. Start to take your arms up. So it's a low crescent lunge with the right knee connecting to the mat. And from here, we can get a little bit deeper into our hips, allow the belly to go forward. Maybe even the heart rises as the arms start to reach up and back and the nose goes up. It's also referred to commonly as the lunar moon lunge. So it's a little more passive with the right knee down. Now take a breath in. Bring your hands to the mat, frame your left leg, straighten your left leg and hinge back into that half split. Bring your left toes up. Yeah, we feel that. Now draw your left hip back. And the nose is going towards the knee, but be tender here. Remember, this is our chance where we, we don't necessarily resist or push. It's neutral, it is. So rather than forcing your head towards your knee or wanting to get out and escape from this, just be with the sensation, just be with it. And in time and in breath, the body will begin to open. So just allow the breath to move through you again. Beautiful. Start to bend your left knee. Walk your hands forward if you need to. Tuck your right toes. Lift your right knee off the mat. Now shift the weight forward into your left foot and lift your right leg high to the sky. It's standing split. 
Now from this standing split, hands are down on the mat. Left knee has a soft bend, right leg is high. Tuck your left cheek underneath you and allow your right hip to roll on top of your left. So the heart's beginning to roll to the right edge of your mat. And now close that up, but don't lower your right leg. Just bring the hips back to neutral or even with your mat. And now again, roll the right hip up as the left hip tucks under and do that again. Neutral, pelvis goes neutral. One more time, roll the right hip up, left cheek tucks under. Beautiful. Now come back to standing split, hips parallel to the floor. Take a long breath in. And when you exhale, bring your right leg down to the mat into a fold. Take a halfway lift and fold again. Rebuild the spine, come up to stand. Arms go high, take a long breath in. And forward folds. This time the left leg will lead the way. Step it way back, but keep the left knee high. Leave your left hand on the mat. Turn your heart towards your bent right leg. Reach your right arm high, dragonfly twist. Take a big breath in. Bring your right hand back to the mat, frame your right foot, lower your left knee, get settled on the mat. Begin to lift your arms into that lunar lunge. Left knee is down, right knee is bent, arms go high. Elevate the heart here, maybe even look up. Take a big breath in. Lower your hands, frame your right leg and hinge back, straighten your right leg, toes go up and we feel. Allow the nose to fall down towards the knee, but remember that sweet space of neither resisting nor pushing, instead just allowing. Now begin to walk your hands forward if you need to. Bend your right knee, tuck your left toes. Lift your left leg high, standing split. And begin to roll that same action, this time to the left. Left hip goes high, right hip goes under. And then we come back to neutral pelvis. And then we do that again and we roll the left hip up. And then we come back to neutral. You have one more just like that. Allow it to roll. And then neutral to stay, standing split, take a big breath in and bring your left foot to meet your right into a fold. Start to slowly peel the body up to stand. When you get to the top, you'll exhale. Cross your right leg over your left, make an X. Take a breath in, soft bend in your knees and you fold over and you get a stretch for the hips, the pelvis, the glutes. Great for sciatic pain. Start to rebuild the spine. This time left goes over right and you make an X, you take a breath in and you fold over those soft bent legs. And then slowly rise up. Uncross your legs, close your eyes.
and just feel. Take a giant step back with your left leg. Plant your entire left foot on the mat and your right knee will bend. Make sure that your hips are facing forward. So for most of us, we have to step wide. Not as wide as your mat, but enough space so that your left hip can go forward. Your belly button is forward, your heart is forward, and your arms begin to extend high. It's called warrior one. And make sure that the back foot, the left one, is completely plugged into the mat. Begin to elevate the heart. Find the fierceness here, the strength, the confidence. Sometimes when there's so much unknown, we fall into these patterns of fear and worry. And what we can do is we can lean into it and we can be strong in it and we can look for the truth and the wisdom in it and we can remember that we are never ever alone. Take a big breath in, sweep your arms behind you, make that basket, weave your fingers together. Now push your heart forward again, take a long breath in. Coming into that humble warrior that we come to a lot, bow forward, bring your right shoulder inside that bent right leg. Maybe the hands rise up towards the ceiling. Maybe they stay at your back. Your eyes go to your left foot and you remember humility. This is so powerful in our path of awakening. We'll come out of this by unhooking our hands, bringing them to the mat, turning, just walking our hands to the long edge of our mat, and we'll be in a wide forward fold. Hands are down, folding over this wide stance. We get space again for the hamstrings. Now just turn towards the back of your mat and begin to walk your hands around, bend your left knee, keep the right foot plugged into the mat. Make sure your hips are wide and begin to rise up towards the back of your mat. Hips forward, heart forward, arms go high, and then begin to elevate your heart and your eyes in that fierce warrior, that symbol of strength, that symbol of standing in truth allowing the fear or whatever it is to show up, the uncertainty, maybe it's happiness, just bring it, welcome it. And now bring your hands behind you, interlace your fingers, squeeze your heart forward, take a breath. And then come back. Come back to the front of your mat. Step your left foot to meet your right. Again, just laying the body over the folds. Folds are a wonderful posture to surrender, to let go, to be. Bend your knees. Come into a tiny ball. And then lower your bum to the mat. Come all the way down to your spine. Hug your knees in. Take your knees wide towards your armpits. Reach for your feet or your ankles. Let them rise to the ceilings. And push hand into feet, feet into hand. Into happy baby. Release the hands from your legs, bring your feet to the mat, knees will be high. Make sure that your heels come close to your cheeks, bring your arms down by your side, knees are high. Let your pelvis tuck under as your spine connects to the mat. And then your next in breath, begin to elevate the hips up towards the ceiling. It's a beautiful bridge pose. It reminds us to lead with our heart, not with our head. Incredibly calming for the nervous system into quiet. 
push into your feet just a little bit more, get some more engagement there. Lift up your hips an inch. And begin to lay your spine onto the mat. Teal your arms wide with your palms face up. And just notice the subtleness that that did to your heart. Take a breath in and drop your knees over to the left. Get a twist. Come back up to center and drop them over to the right. And then come back to center. Let your feet find the mat, the soles of your feet touch, the knees open. And we let go. Place your right hand on your belly, your left hand on your heart. No matter what shows up, whether it's fear, uncertainty, sadness, joy, it's part of this experience of being human. And when we learn to be with what is, to even look at straight in the eye and ask, what are you here to teach me? What can I learn? What do I need to know? There's usually a beautiful truth there. And when we connect with others seeking truth, no matter what it is we're going through, we know we're not alone. As always, it's just such a beautiful opportunity to share my space with you, my heart with you, the practice. I feel you. I so appreciate your support, your Sangha. I appreciate you in my life as like-minded truth seekers. I know that I'm not alone. And I'm super thankful. But thank you for practicing, for surrendering, for letting go, for going inside for being exactly who you are. Have a beautiful week, and I hope to see you really soon. Stay healthy.